Hi, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpa Queen, and I'm reporting live from my little cabin in the woods, Murphy's Law. Uh, we had some internet problems last night um, where at the end of our thing, it drops. So if it drops for any reason, hang on. Sometimes it reconnects. So we are here tonight with our author of the month, our book of the month. I'm going to show it to you. It's We Gather Together. A Nation Divided, A President in Turmoil, An Historic Campaign to Embrace Gratitude and Grace by Denise Kiernan. She's a New York Times bestselling author. And the first time I had Denise Kiernan here was for Girls of Atomic City. And then- she That's a wrote, lot. That was almost 10 years ago. I know. And then the book that I really wanted to pick, but she has this new one, was The Last Castle because I have this love affair with everything to do with uh, the Biltmore. Biltmore. And, well, uh, we can talk about that too. We can talk about that we too. We will, we will. So, but first, before we start, I'm just gonna, I wanna read this about you because uh, a lot of times um, our readers do not know the backgrounds of our authors and yours is so exciting and everything, I decided that I would read it. So you're an, uh, Denise is an author. She's a journalist and a producer. Her last two books, The Last Castle and The Girls of Atomic City were instant New York Times bestsellers in both hardcover and We did have a little bit of a lag. Well, hang on. You froze on me, Kathy. Hang on, everybody, we'll get there. Hey, Kathy. Typing Kathy a message. I don't know if anyone can hear me or not. I'm gonna give Kathy a little text. Okay, well, hopefully when this is posted, we'll cut out some of this. I have no idea um, when Kathy's going to come back on, but thank you, everybody who's watching this whenever it is you're watching this. <laughs> um, Denise, I'm just going to keep talking because why not? I'm here. Um, I'm the author of, yes, Kathy mentioned the Girls of Atomic City and The Last Castle. Also, we gather together and my new children's book giving thanks, uh, which is the picture book partner to We Gather Together. So hopefully we'll get to talk about that a little bit tonight as well.
This is me calling Kathy. Isn't this exciting? All this behind the scenes stuff. Okay, where is she? I'm gonna call her. You're back. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yay. Well, we'll just continue where we were. Okay, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpit Queen, and we had a little internet lost connection, but I was reading to you from all the accolades on Denise Kiernan, who is with us tonight, who's our author of the month with her book of the month. And um, the book is We Gather Together. So I'm gonna try this. I'm just gonna give you a little bit here. Um, both the Girls of Atomic City was a Los Angeles Times and NPR bestseller named one of Amazon's top 100 best books of 213 and has been published in multiple languages. Kiernan has been a featured guest on many radio and television shows, including NPR's Weekend Edition, PBS NewsHour, MSNBC's Morning Joe, and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. She also was featured along with Leslie Lear at our past um, Girlfriend Weekend, which was a Zoom meeting. And she has such wonderful accolades on the back and blurbs from, you know, Kate Anderson Brower, Wiley Cash, Neil Thompson, and my dear friend and author, Karen Abbott. So my bestie. Book. I love her. And I was just talking to her the other day. So tell me how this book came into fruition. What was the, the one thing that got you started down this rabbit hole to tell all this amazing story about, uh, and it's so important because right now with Thanksgiving ahead and, and everything that's happened with COVID, gratitude is, is high on my list and grace. How did this come about? Uh, tell our audience, Denise. Well, I've always been fascinated not just by Thanksgiving, but by the way different people celebrate it. Um, and I, I always like the idea of there being a day where everybody sits around and says thanks together. Now, over the years, of course, it's become, 
it's taken on many, many different, uh, you know, incarnations. And it was one of the times that it really kind of was driven home for me that I was really curious about not just how holidays evolve, but how cultures evolve around holidays was when I was living overseas, actually. So I've lived in um, Paris and I've lived in Rome and I have had Thanksgiving in both cities. And it is very funny to celebrate American Thanksgiving outside of America because either people have no idea what you're doing, unlike Christmas, which is celebrated you know, all over the planet, right. um, or they think they know what it is, but they're not really sure. And you're running around. I remember running around Rome trying to find cranberries. And this was impossible. This was impossible. I love cranberries. My favorite. Me I love too. Sauce. I <laughs> love. And there is nothing like cranberry sauce when it smacks up against gravy. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> and um, we're running around and we're trying it because they just don't do cranberries there. And, you know, longish uh, story, a little shorter. We had, you know, a friend had a friend who knew a person who worked for the United Nations and could get into the commissary and they weren't sure what kind of cranberries they could. I was like, I will take whatever you can get. And I was like, what are we doing? (laughs) Why are we doing this? And then, um, you know, I had a Thanksgiving in Paris that, you know, was couldn't fit the the turkey in the oven. The oven door wouldn't close. You try you try cooking a turkey with an oven door cracked open. But I was like, why am I so clink? Like, what what does this mean to me? And then I started looking into the real history of Thanksgiving, not, you know, what uh, were what I was taught in school. And I found this woman, Sarah Josepha Hale, a widowed mother of five with no, this is the early 1800, no formal education, who goes on to become one of the most powerful magazine editors in the United States was editor of the ladies book, this just incredibly influential women's magazine. Um, She was Martha Stewart before Martha Stewart. I mean, she was in, if she were alive today, she would be, you know, the biggest Instagram influencer anywhere. Like her magazine told people what to do, how to do it, what to wear, all that sort of stuff. And she loved Thanksgiving, but, you know, back then, and since thanks, the idea of Thanksgiving and even the word Thanksgiving has been around just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and gratitude ceremonies have been around for thousands and thousands and thousands. And, um, you know, on this continent, there, there used to have, you know, even during the time of the colonies in the early 1800s, there would be Thanksgivings, all different types, times of the year, different times in different states. Yep. And it depended on, you know, a um, the Continental Congress would, you know, proclaim. I talk about a lot of these different things in the book. You know, uh, we're having a special Thanksgiving for the repeal of the stamp tax. You know, stuff like that. And then you had, you know, in New England, you know, that one state might be having their, you know, a Thanksgiving in October because of when their harvest was. Another place might have a Thanksgiving in the spring for a more religious reason. Some of them were religious, some of them were secular. And she was on this mission to say, hey, can we have one Thanksgiving, same day, all across the country, I need like to get a president on board. So she begins this mission of like campaigning, ambassadors, governors, presidents, everything to have a Thanksgiving on a Thursday in November that everybody had on the same day. And until President Lincoln agreed with her during the Civil War, you know, up until then, Thanksgivings were proclaimed or they weren't, and different states followed suit and decided to go along with what the president said or what this other person said, let's have a Thanksgiving. You know, this particular pastor wants to have a Thanksgiving. She was like, nope, there's going to be, we need to have one and the whole country needs to do it. What a crazy idea. I wonder if it'll catch on. Well, what's funny is that isn't what we were taught in school. No. At all. Mm -mm. And it's amazing to me how much I have questioned the history and the things that I learned when I was in school, because so many of it is just like myths and falsehoods and 
you know, from Columbus. Romanticized. Day, yeah. Yeah. From all this. And, you know, the, the Indians serve the, you know, the Mayflower people. I mean, it's so ridiculous. And I, you know, I took an African-American history course in college because I was an art history minor. And I was completely blown away on aspects of world history that I knew nothing about. So sure. books like this are really wonderful because, you know, this woman that she's, you know, what a leader and what a thing that she did. So and, and she had no idea of the impact she was going to have when she did it. And she was always doing, she was always like, let's raise money for these people. They need it. Let's, you know, start a campaign, you know, for this, these young women need to be educated, you know, really basic things. She didn't have the right to vote. She didn't live long enough to see the right to vote. And yet she had this remarkable, um, this remarkable influence. And of course the Thanksgiving she imagined doesn't, you know, it doesn't look anything like that. Well, it looks a little bit like that now, but it doesn't look a, a lot, no parades, no football games, none of that stuff. Um, and I do get into in the book, what was interesting to me, because the book in a way is, it's really a look at Amer modern American history, but just through our experience with this particular oh, tradition. Yeah. And um, it was interesting to see how over time, those those myths creep in and it's that to me was one of the more really interesting things and also she's just so giving and wonderful and such an inspiration it's I mean all the stuff that she pulled off is all I could think was and which is why I love doing stuff like this how did I not know about this you know how exactly. did I not know about this you know? And that's what always fascinates me is the story that has never been told before. So when you read something like this and you go, wait a minute, that means everything that I was ever taught was not exactly right. And now today, Thanksgiving has been known as not Thanksgiving, but the beginning of, uh, you know, the um, Black Friday, of, you know, of the super sales and stuff. Right. And I think People don't even gather together for Thanksgiving meals. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you that at any one time, I've got five or six bags of cranberries in my freezer. Because what I do is I buy them up so I can have cranberries all year long. All year. All yep. year. I love and they keep, they actually keep, you don't even have to put them in the fridge. That's what was so wonderful about cranberries is they survived. It was one of the things that, you know, indigenous people taught the people who came over was this, these are high in vitamin C and they store really well. Isn't right. Because there was no refrigeration. I mean, like you were invested in things that had a long, you know, shelf life underground, wherever they were storing their, right. storing their foods. Um, and, you know, back then you had things like, you know, rickets was a problem. Well, you needed your, you know, you needed, to, <laughs> I mean, they're eating, eating well, was you know important and being able to do so without being able to store things long term but i love i love keeping the i keep cranberries in my freezer i like year round and if you find somebody who's like me that is a cranberry aficionado you'd be surprised at how we just randomly share rapidly all these recipes because i have this sugar-free wonderful dessert i make with cranberries that people just go who would ever know this doesn't have any sugar in it? You know, you can make so many things now that are not unhealthy, healthy, you know? So yes, and the thing, I mean, like what was interesting is as, and what was interesting while I was doing this was talking about Thanksgiving during the Spanish flu, you know, in 1919. I mean, talking, because that was so similar to what was going on, that part of the book. And when I was, initially working on it, COVID wasn't happening. So when we went back to like edit and revise and publish and proof and all that sort of stuff, it was all, you know, here we were with this book called We Gather Together and, you know, the phrase we, social distancing is taking off and it's like, oh my God. But um, that, I think that even makes this even more important because when you think about all the family gatherings that you had with cousins and uncles and grandparents yeah. and everything, and now this Thanksgiving, none of my family's going to be together. And so I'm actually traveling back home to Kansas to be with my best friend from high school and her family, because it's not my 
year, this isn't the year for my turn. Yeah. So, you know, and because we all live all over where we all used to live in one hometown, mm -hmm. uh, it's changed. But the amount of research that you do in your book, how long did this take Denise to put together? You know, it's, it's always so with every book, it's for some reason, it's always so hard to answer that question because you have so much when you write for a living, right? You've been doing that. I've been doing this for almost 30 years now. Um, you constantly are coming up with ideas, evaluating ideas. You're constantly evaluating ideas because not, not every idea is great. And you often have no idea. I mean, you don't know what idea. You only know it's right for you. And if something's going to hold your, your curiosity is very important because these books are in your life for so long. Um, and with this one, with all of them, I start researching things before I decide whether or not I'm going to write them because, because I do nonfiction, I have to make sure there's enough there, there before I get started. I have to be exactly. able to convince my agent, my editor and my publisher and all those folks that this is something we should do next. Um, so, I mean, it's just, I mean, so I, I had, you know, I had done a few years research on this before I even wrote a proposal about it. And then you really dig in and then you use, you know, maybe, hopefully maybe about two thirds or half of what you find. <laughs> but wouldn't this make a wonderful, like Ken Burns-esque documentary, uh, you know, yeah. wouldn't a series on maybe um, you know, American holidays. And I've oh, been learning yeah. all these other holidays from other places in the world. And I'm, I'm, you know, everything from Day of the Dead in Mexico to Diwali in India. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated by all these festivals and how so many of them have some similarities, you know, mm -hmm. even though they're totally on different sides of the globe. Yep. I, I think this would be a fascinating, um, you know, you know, Denise, you could do this, a fascinating story on history taught that is not, you know, not even close to being right. I know. You know? And it's, what's funny is, and, and that, um, last year I actually did a, an op-ed for, um, a little thing for time, um, about that. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do this book. I have got to have you on my mom and cat's book club for that book. Yes. So this is the picture book partner to we gather together. So oh. big, big parents, moms, dads, mom and mom, dad and dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, whatever can be reading the big person book. And then this is a picture book for kids about giving thanks and about Thanksgiving a Thanksgiving book with no pilgrims. Imagine wow, that. Wow, can you imagine? Imagine that. But I it's lovely. It talks, it's, you know, it talks about the Civil so War. It's and wonderful. It, it's just, it's a nice, and it, it focuses on all the different, the, all the different ways to say thank you. So oh. it, it talks about the history of the event. And then, you know, because you, like you said, um, all these things that we were taught, kids are still being taught. I know stuff today. And so one of the reasons that a book like we gather together finds an audience is because of what you said. We didn't hear this. And like, as we never go back and correct the story for kids. So you see stuff in the newspaper and the magazine. And, and, and if we all, we've all, if you pay attention, we all know the story we were told about Thanksgiving was. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yet we keep, we don't, yeah, we don't, but it's not like you tell, you know, a seven-year-old, you know, hey, make a turkey with your hand and put on a pilgrim hat. And we never go back and correct the record when they're taking AP history in high school. We just forget to, <laughs> we never correct it. And so that's all they know. And I was like, it would be nice if kids had a little, little Thanksgiving book that was was it, it was at least factual actually it teaches yeah. the true meaning of what thanksgiving is it's not mm -hmm. the turkey the big meal the pilgrims it's really about gratitude and giving thanks for what we've been blessed with no matter how little i think about you know i had some health issues during this time of covid and 
the fact that I'm still here, I am very thankful and I'm very aware of how lucky I am because I've lost so many. It's like still even almost every other day, I hear of somebody who died from yeah. complications from COVID. And I think people don't realize that people still are not, you know, are still fighting that. So Oh, yeah. I think this book is so timely and that's why it was so important when we had the little glitch on getting you on board on Tuesday night to come back and do this special, um, you know, uh, gathering so we could talk about this book. Oh, there we go again. Oh, no. Oh, we got it pretty far that time. Okay, I'm gonna text Kathy again. We froze again. Let's see what happens. It's so funny when these things are recorded, so. I don't know if this is going to be edited out or not. I don't think it is. I think this will be in the final recording. Um, just kind of talking to myself here. Anyway, we were talking about the children's book and we were talking about the grown-up book. Um, children's book is just called Giving Thanks, uh, How Thanksgiving Became a National Holiday. It's, it's uh, illustrated by the amazing Jamie Christophe. And it is just the best. And I think Kathy is logging back on, which is wonderful. And did just such a nice job. There's Sarah Josepha Hale serving turkeys. Um, no, just for this. Okay. And hopefully Kathy will be back on in a second. And I'm just going to sit here and sip my vodka soda. I don't know where everybody's watching from. I'm here in lovely Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which is a home of Biltmore House. Uh, my book, The Last Castle, was about Biltmore House. It's the book Kathy was mentioning um, earlier, which I love to talk to Kathy about books. It's just so much fun. Hi. Can you hear me? Up. Oh. I'd bring my puppy in and put him on camera, but he's not fully trained yet. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Can you hear me now? This is so weird how it keeps going in and out. It makes me jump through all these hoops. I'm so sorry this is happening. The weird thing is that when it records, it will just immediately jump and those time lapses won't be there. So, Oh, really? Because I was just talking to everybody. <laughs> no, it, it'll just jump on to the next thing because we had it happen at the end last night on our Zoom. But Aww. I have no idea. The weather's not bad. It just keeps going in and out. But... Um, Anyway, your book is wonderful. It should be uh, library school adoption. Uh, we gather together giving thanks. Absolutely fabulous. I do not want to leave tonight without talking about The Last Castle, though, because I have been a big fan of the Biltmore since I went there for Denise um, uh, Deanne Geist uh, set a book there. And she had a whole weekend where she invited people to have uh, this book experience. All the docents read her book and we had costume parties and we went from top to bottom. And then I've been back several times and every time I go, I learn more. I love everything reading about uh, the Vanderbilts. And so how did that come about, Denise, The Last Castle? That was one that, um... That one, I, I mean, that was a, that was a monster of a book to do. I and bet. I had always, I'd always been interested in the house and the family, but 
sort of always assumed that the full story had been told. But no, one, no, not even close. And one, I mean, there's stuff in my book, The Last Castle, that has never been published anywhere ever before. Uh, read it, everybody. You have to read it. Yeah, it is. If you if you liked Downton Abbey, I call it Appalachian Abbey because it's Appalachian, it's Appalachian Abbey. Abbey. It, to uh, me, it should be no. the American White House because to get into it is so, you know, it's, it doesn't seem like it's so much. On, in fact, they stored. Oh. Don't tell. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wow. They, they stored, stored the art art there yeah. during the times of you know world war ii world yes. war ii yeah. i i have been reading everything on it ever since i first went there and i cannot tell you how beautiful it is in the country and the farm and the winery everything about it fascinates me and the last time i was there they were setting up the downton abbey fashion it. yeah yeah that, it was great but i usually if i go to the west uh east coast as i'm coming back i'll go up and go through it again because so many people haven't been there and you have oh, to Oh, so many people haven't been there. And that, so one of the things that made me decide, cause I was like, I don't, I shouldn't do this. People know too much about it. And I had a couple, I back-to-back -back visitors um, and I took them to see Biltmore. Cause I was, I had been reading tons of books about it and I'd been finding all this research and I was researching something else at the New York Times the New York Public Library Manuscript and Archives Division, which has a massive manuscript collection. And I thought, I read a lot. I've never seen any of this, you know, and I thought, and then I had two friends visit who are both uh, book, just can't get their faces out of books. One's a professor, uh, a history professor, and they knew next to nothing about Biltmore. And they said, why don't we know why do we only hear about Newport, Rhode Island? Why do we only hear about Fifth Avenue in New York City when Last Castle, I mean, similar to, in a way, Girls of Atomic City, we gather together. At the heart of Last Castle is Edith Vanderbilt, a woman that never gets talked about, like Sarah Josepha Hale never gets talked about, like the women who were working on the Manhattan Project never got talked about. And Edith Vanderbilt was, you know, mistress of the largest house ever largest house ever in the united states nobody knows that they all think it's I, one of the places nobody knows they have no idea how huge it is and if you and, go there you find out not only you learn art history yeah you learn all about uh tiffany because yeah. they've got so much of the forestry tiffany. yes there's so many things there that first forestry, the first forestry school ever in the United States of America started at Biltmore. Isn't that amazing? And another thing that we weren't taught in school, never even heard of it when I was in school. Oh. In fact, I was trying to think of any, I think I heard more about Graceland by Elvis Presley when I was in school than I ever heard <laughs> about Biltmore. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Just and Graceland's like, it's everything, even the White House, everything is so, I mean, the White House is like 60 something thousand square feet, which is sizable, yeah. <laughs> but built, built more house, the house, not even the stables or the, yeah. or any, the house alone is 175,000 square feet. And, it's and so much happened there. And they, it, one of my favorite parts of that book was finding out and uncovering and really digging into the relationships that Edith and George, but especially Edith had with the community, starting schools, I mean, doing all this stuff. It was just, I mean, it's amazing what they did. She would rise, you know, a worker would be sick or his wife would be pregnant and Edith would, she would get on a horse and bring a basket of blankets and soup or whatever. She, the, the the head of the largest house in America, she didn't have to do that. She could have just written checks, you know, to help people. <laughs> she physically went out and did things and started schools and worked with people. She was, it was just, and, and the whole setting and the art, I mean, I love art too. I mean, I, obviously I know you, you are an artist and you love art and you like, I think like I do the role that art plays, plays in history, which is one of the other things, like in all my books, I try to have a little something in there. So like, and we gather together, I talk about 
the illustrator Thomas Nast, and I talk about J.C. Leindecker, and I talk about Norman Rockwell, and how they illustrated Thanksgiving. Right. And there's a lot of there's a lot of art, um, certainly in the uh, in the Last Castle for sure. But that's something, and I know you appreciate this, Kathy, is just kind of looking at history from an artistic perspective because that's how, especially like in the 1800s. I mean. There was so towards the end of the century is when photography became more common. Illustrators would go to battlefields and sketch. They what were was the original the war. Yeah, they were the the in a way they were, they were like the print videographers of a war situation, just like you know they do in court scenes and everything. So, yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it, it's fascinating. And if everybody needs to read these books, I mean, if you do anything this fall, these would be three great. And if you get a chance, go to the Biltmore and maybe you should go for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's, well, all there, Chris, I will tell you like Biltmore, all, the holiday season, it is hard to compete. It is pretty yeah. amazing. And then the, the, there's a hotel in town that's also in the book called the Grove Park Inn. And they have the national gingerbread competition, which is, oh, oh my God. It's amazing. The winners are on Good Morning America. It's, it's all, oh. all the Food Network people come. It's amazing. What they do with gingerbread is fascinating. That is such a beautiful part of North Carolina. I mean, it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I remember saying, we stayed last time in Airbnb up on a, overlooking everything. And it was just like, wow. Oh. I could live there. It's beautiful. It gets a little rough sometimes in the winter, but, and it also has the, the biggest selling winery in the country. Yeah, Everybody thinks right. it's Napa. No. And the Biltmore sells more wine than and any anyone. Other yep. Isn't that crazy? So, and, it, uh, yep. and I just think it would be the perfect White House. It, it's just, you can see the state dinners, you know, and it has, it's just and, and it's so well protected i mean it's such a huge they still have eight thousand acres yeah it's a fortress you know trying to get in try to get in there you know it's uh it would be a lot better to protect because washington dc you're just out there you know oh, yeah. and it's always amazing but thank goodness that you're doing that uh because you did that and i'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do next denise i mean are you starting on a new project I am. Can you I talk am, about I it am. at all? I can. I can. So there's actually going to be, and this one's already done, oh. but it's not out yet. There's going to be a third part of this. There's going to be a young readers edition of We Gather Together that's going to be aimed at like middle schoolers. Oh. So then, yeah. So then you're going to have We Gather Together, the regular adult book. We Gather Together, the young reader edition. And then giving thanks so that they call it, it's a family read. So is that book out yet? Is it out? Nope. Yet? That'll be out. That'll be out next, next middle of next year. So okay. we can do, we can talk next year. But well, um, we, get, we have a cool cats book club, which is for middle reader and up. So see, we, we got lots of opportunities. We got lots to, to, to do. And then I'm working on, so d definitely next year, that would be a fun thing to do for the cool cats. And, um, then we have, you know, I'm working on a book called Obstinate Daughters that is a look at the revolutionary era of the United States of America, the colonies, but through the experiences of women, indigenous people and people of color. So it's a lot of the stories that we're very familiar with, but those stories, the battles, the experiences are all told through the the. Uh, activities, experiences of these marginalized groups that don't often get their stories told. But there's a road trip element to it. So I'm kind of retracing the steps of a lot of these historical figures and looking at what their legacy is or is not. Um, so that's so what I'm working on got, right now. Have we got Sacagawea in there anywhere on this, on this or Pocahontas or which always gets the stories a little bit romanticized, you know, and everything. Sure they so, do. Yeah. No, we're, um, we're a lot, we're a lot earlier than that. So oh. yeah. Yeah. So well, that's well, pretty early. That's, yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. I yeah. want to know about that because I'll be, I'm about to close up my list for 2020, 
three will be working on 2024. So uh, I need probably to won't be at that the new the one I just told you about the young reader we gather together will be will be out next year, no question. That's out in 2023. Um, oh, and a daughter, yeah. So the we the third the young reader we gather together will be out in 2023 and in under a year and um obstinate daughters probably won't be out for at least till 2024 maybe 2025 well when you get that ready to launch oh, let yeah. me do another special for you because we kind of messed up your week and i would love to do that because these books are too important for families not well, I appreciate to appreciate that no i i really you know i really am passionate about the author's books that i pick and it's really important that I want people to watch the YouTube videos and read these books because our, the books that we've got on our list are exceptional and yours okay. are. And Absolutely. Uh, everything that you've been doing is great, but you know, I can just see you, you're a producer too. So you should do the, uh, you should think about doing a, you know, a series on this for like maybe a pilot series for we gather together. That would I've be been, so interesting. Yeah, I'm in the I'm deep into doing that with Girls of Atomic City right now. So I mean it's okay. amazing how long these things how long these things take. But yeah, I I I mean I agree. I think it would be a fantastic story. But I and I love how passionate you get about these these books, all your books. Um and, you know, it, it would be great. I'd love, I mean, it would be great to be able to talk about all three books together and how they're different for different age groups. And um, we can do a Thanksgiving next year. We'll have three Let's Thanksgiving. Let's do three. that. Let's instead do of three that. Thanksgiving puts, we'll have, instead of two, we'll have three. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it, but let's do it right where we get all talk to all the pulpit queens and timber guys and get them on there with their grandkids and everybody yes and yes have a big night of it and uh start a new tradition i would love that the right history the the right history that are you know it's very important to me my grandson knows the right history because yeah. i i'm i'm always every time columbus day goes around i think oh god it's a bank holiday. It's nothing to do with President's Day or, or all this stuff. It's and it it's shouldn't. Old. It shouldn't be a bank holiday anymore. It just shouldn't. It just shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd like to see Thanksgiving come back with a per with a gratitude purpose of true Thanksgiving, because yes. we just kind of skip it. We kind of go into Halloween and it's Christmas, and yep. I think Thanksgiving gets overlooked. So for all of you out there in um, um, the YouTube Pulp with Queen channel land, please read this book, check out with your family giving thanks. And it doesn't matter where you come from in this world, but we all should have gratitude and thanks for sharing a meal, getting together and sharing a conversation. Being story. alive. Yeah, totally. Being alive. We're all, you know, if we are watching this, we're still here. So Gosh, thank you. I'm so afraid it's going to go off again. We will do this again. I will be talking to you, Denise, and do keep me posted on uh, that next book because I really would love to do something. Oh, that'd I be a blast. It'd be fun. Let's let's just do it. Thank you for all the glitches tonight. And yes. really, thank you for coming back. I'll be uh, downloading this tonight and I will share it on all social media. Let's see if we can really get America to really understand um, uh, why we need to gather together, whether it's a pulpit queen and timber guy book club meeting, or That's whether right. it's learn about great stories like your writing. Thank you, Denise. Thank You're you, amazing. Kathy. You're thank welcome. You, you. Tell Karen hi if you see her because I will. she's got a great new book coming out too. Yes, and she does. We, we can get yes. you back as best friends together and yeah. go from. Oh, we give we give great. We've done presentations all over the country where it's a, it's we're, we're, we're a ball. Yeah. Well, I'm penciling that in. I want Denise Kiernan and Karen Abbott to oh, do. Oh yes, you do. Okay. Oh, you do. That's, yeah. That's 2000. We could do like, we could do like a little writing workshop thing. It'd be fun too. Oh, now we're talking. Well, yeah. I'll be back with you soon. Everybody. Thank you, Denise uh, Kiernan for this wonderful night and everybody read this book. We gather together. Thanks everybody. Thank you. It's all about the story. Happy Thanksgiving.
Happy Thanksgiving, Denise. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.